Hi folks. So what we're going to look at here is questions five and six of the Leaving Cert 2022 exam paper concerning differentiation, functions, all that sort of stuff there. So the first one here, we're given the function g of x is equal to x squared minus one over x. And we've got to find the derivative or the diff of it. Now what we've got to do here, first of all, is read write this. So instead of saying g of x equal to x squared minus one over x, bring that x up. Now that x by itself is to the power of 1. And when it comes up, the sign changes. So it's going to become minus 1x to the minus 1. And by doing that then, I can apply the rules of differentiation or multiply down by the power, reduce the power by 1. So we diff that, multiply down by the power of the 2, becomes 2x, reduce the power by 1, 2x to the power of 1, or simply 2x. Then multiply down by the power, minus and a minus makes it plus, 1x reduce the power by 1, and 1 smaller, the minus 1 is minus 2. And I would rewrite that, tidy it up a little bit, 2x plus 1 over x squared. Just bringing down that x squared down below the line, or the x to the power of minus 2 below the line to make it x squared. Next one we're looking at is factor theorem. And this is a cubic. It's got three factors. So it's a cubic. We're given one of the factors. And what we must do is find the three values of x. When it says values of x, what we're looking out for is the roots, where it cuts the x-axis. So once they said that something's a factor, it means it divides into it. So do your long division of x plus 1 into that cubic there. And this should be something we're perfect at here. So... Uh, what do you multiply x by to get 2x cubed? 2x squared, and then multiply it down. So we get 2x cubed plus 2x squared. Draw your line, change your signs. They'll go, and we'll see that process repeats. Uh, it'll go in from uh, left to right. So minus 21 minus 2 is minus 23. x squared plus 40x plus 63. So we just brought down each of those. Repeat the process. What I multiply x by to get minus 23x squared is minus 23x. Multiply it out. And we get minus 23x squared minus 23x. Draw your line. Change your signs. There you go. We now have 63x plus me 63. We know we're right here because there's no remainder. What I multiply x by to get 63x is 63. And multiply that down once more. Gives me 63x plus 63. Draw your line, change your signs, both cancel, and uh, no remainder. Now we're given, uh, we're looking for three values at the minute. We have one factor here, x plus 1. To get the other two factors, we've got a trinomial or quadratic, or 2x squared, uh, 2x squared minus 23x plus 63. Factorize that whatever way you wish, or do your minus b formula. Um, by doing the minus b formula, you'll end up with your roots, which is perfect. So do your minus b if you wish. I'm just going to factorize it here. Generally, I'm thinking of 63. I'm thinking 9 and 7. Uh, 7, 9, minus, and a minus. And that means my three factors are 2x minus 9, x minus 7, and x plus 1. The initial factor that they give me. To get the roots now, solve each of these. Let each bracket, let each factor equal to 0. So 2x minus 9 is equal to 0. This is the one that you might make a mistake on. 2x equal to 9. x equal to 9 over 2. Your other one there. x minus 7 is equal to 0. x equal to 7. And your final one. x plus 1 is equal to 0. x equal to minus 1. Just bring it across them terms. So our three roots are 9 over 2 or 4.5, 7 and minus 1. Next one, find the range of values for which f dash x, the derivative, is negative, correct two decimal places. So the original function, f of x is 2x cubed minus 21x squared. Yeah, so that's my original function. I'm going to diff it here. Multiplying down by the power, reduce it by 1, so 3 times 2 is 6, x squared, 2 times 21 is 42x, plus 40, uh, 
time, so that's a diff. Now, for which it's negative. So, 6x squared minus 42x plus 40 is less than 0. Could open up brackets, could divide it by 2 if we wish, uh, make it a wee bit simpler. But once I see there, it's two decimal places, I'm thinking I'm going to be using my minus b formula. So for my minus b formula there, minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So there's no real, um, it's, no, it's no simpler to simplify it and do your minus b. Just let the calculator deal with it. We shall get Barry's T there, lovely. So my A is 6, my B is minus 42, and my C is 40. Throw that all in. And then just type it as you see it. Now we're not expecting a nice answer. Two decimal places, so 5.86 is one of my answers. Go back, change that plus to a minus, and 1.14. So the seven brings a three up. Now it says a range of values. So what we've got to do here is you've got to say to yourself, what shape? So anything time you're solving a quadratic inequality, you follow through this procedure. So just draw out a simple x, y axis. Nothing swanky. We've got our roots here, 1.14 and 5.86. So the critical points. What shape is a 6x squared function? It's a u shape. Now they're asking you, where is that graph negative? Less than zero. Less than zero, that's what that means there. So the graph is less than zero everywhere down here. So in relation to 1.14, we're getting bigger. 2, 3, 4. In relation to 5.86, we're getting smaller. So x is bigger than 1.14, and x is less than 5.86. Alternatively, you can put that all together. You might see in the back of the books, it written like that. That's the same thing. Read from the x. x is bigger than 1.14 and less than 5.86. Number 5 is a very fair question. Next one, <clears throat> we're different according to first principles. Now you should always think about your answer before you even begin. So the answer of this, when I diff it, multiply down by the power, two times two is four, x plus four. Because if I'd make a wee hames of it throughout, uh, I can just waffle and hope that the examiner doesn't see it. Now, my formula for first principles, your limit, h goes to zero, fx plus h minus f of x over h. And what I would do is just do each step as they come. So f of x is my original function. Then sub in your fx plus h. Simply put in my x plus h everywhere there's an x. Tidy that up. Whatever way you want to square it out. Write out the bracket twice if you wish. I'm just finding it tight for space, so I'm going to square the first, multiply the two together, xh, and double it, and square the last. Do the same over here, multiply it out, tidy that up, next thing, I'm going to subtract these two things, maybe we get a wee highlighter here with some jab. It's my f of x, my f of x plus h. Now, can I turn that off now? Draw now. Now, what you see happens here, my original function goes. You can write it out for yourself. So, your f of x plus h is all this length. Take away this, and just remember to change the signs of both of them, and you'll notice that both of these go. 2x squared minus 2x squared goes 4x minus 4x. So, write it out for yourself. And you're left then with 4xh. 2h squared plus 4h. Now keep in mind what my answer. I want it to be 4x plus h. How we do that is we divide this by h now. Um, so put it all over h 
when you do that, h into that goes 4x plus 2h plus 4. And the final thing, limit as h approaches 0, simply horse in 0 for my h. So although it's a lot of work, they're lovely marks. If you get one of them in your exam, you're licking your lips. Ah, oh, sorry, I forgot to throw on me zero. Oh. So 4x plus 2 times 0, just throw it in my zero for my h, plus 4. When you tidy that up, get 4x plus 4. Exactly as we said at the start. This one, a rectangle is expanded into, in its area. If its width is x, x oh shit, width is x. x is bigger than zero, naturally enough. Its length is always four times its width, so four x. Find the rate of change of the area of the rectangle with respect to its width. Right, what I'm thinking there is, so the area of that rectangle is found by length times width. So area is equal to my length, which is 4x times my width is that. So break it up for yourselves. I don't really know where this is going, to be honest. I'm going to get 4x squared. Now they've asked me for the rate. When they ask me for slope, speed, rate of change, maximum, minimum, nearly always thinking of differentiating. So here I'm going to go dA dx, differ. When I do that, I get 8x. Well, I should well stall, stall it there. That's really as much as I get from this. Then it says when the area of the rectangle is 225. So what this will enable me to get is the length and the width. So the area is 225 centimeters squared. My area, I said, is 4x squared. Length times width, which is 4x squared. I'm going to be able to work out the value of x here by dividing by my 4. And then to get x, it's the square root of that. So when I do that, I get 15 over 2, or 7.5. So that's my width. If I wanted to work out my length, it's 4 times 7.5. 4 sevens are 28. 4 halves is 30. So 30 centimeters, 7.5 centimeters. If you're unsure, check it be right. Yep, yeah, we get our 225. And what did they ask me? Find the rate of change of the area with respect to its width when the area. Oh, okay, the rate of change of the area with respect to its width. There's the general term. They said with respect to its width, which worked out to be 7.5. Only thing I can do, sub in 7.5. And for my x. Throw out your calculator, 56 and 85 is 4. Uh, 56, 60 is your answer there. If you want, centimeter squared per centimeter square. Unit of area for the thing. The last one here, number six, the graph of the cubic function. And when I'm thinking of cubic, I'm thinking x cubed or minus x cubed. Now there's a girl I used to teach forever given out. Her name was uh, Shannon. So that's the way I used to tell them. Shannon was always given out. She was negative. So when I've got Shannon, it's the S shape, that's my minus x cubed. If it was the opposite of that, it'd be like that, it's my plus x cubed. So if you look at this general shape here, there's my S, there's my Shannon there. So that original function is some version of a minus x cubed. Now it could be minus a third x cubed, minus two x cubed, whatever, I don't know. But when I diff that, Multiply down by the power, minus 3, reduce the power by 1, I'm going to get minus 3x squared. And an x squared function, you know an x squared function is a u shape, and a minus x squared function is an n shape. So when I dip that, I'm going to get some sort of an n shape, so my graph and my derivative is going to be some version of this. Uh, between 0 and 4. The maximum value, so the highest value, so again that indicates it is a minus x squared, it is the n shape, because we get a maximum value here. Whereas down here, I'd have a minimum value if it was a positive. So another way to look at it. The maximum value in this domain is 1. So the highest point, that's why it only goes up as far as 1 on the y-axis. P dash, 0. So when I diff it, on a horse in 0, 0 just being my x, I get an answer of minus 3. 
So I'm gonna go up, uphill from this. Um, and we've got to graph the thing. Now, the key things here are the turning points. And I can see here the turning points. Where is that? One and three. Now the slopes of those turning points, the slopes of those tangents are zero. So my graph is a representation of that slope or the derivative. And at x is equal to one, the slope is zero here. And at x equal to three, the slope is zero there. So they're the roots. Now, the maximum point then is going to occur between those two points because it's symmetrical here to the point of inflection. So that's at the point one. And we're getting a good shape of that, um, a good version of the, the derivative now. And then it's going to be symmetrical, four there and minus three. So if we join them up, nice smooth curve, don't use your ruler there, you get your minus x square function. Another way, someone, if you're going into it in depth, if you do your tangent line from here up to it, it's a negative. So it's negative there all the way up to 1. That's why it's below 0. Then from 1 to 2, or 1 to 3, sorry, we're increasing our values here. From 1 to 3, if I drew a tangent line there, it's increasing. And that's why it's all above the x-axis here, and then after 3, if I look at my tangent line, it's going downhill once again. And that's why I'm below the axis there. But if you identify the slopes of the tangents are 0 here and here, put them in. They give you the maximum point, which is halfway between. They give you the lowest point, and then join up in a nice smooth curve.